Hi everybody, this is Jessica Carrier with the Joe Davis Conservation Foundation. Thanks for joining us for another Facebook Live event this beautiful Thursday morning. Uh, this morning we are out here at Gateway Park in Galena, located on Highway 20, just east of the city of Galena. And uh, today we're going to tell you a little bit about the history of the park and how it uh, became part of the city and preserved for everybody. So today, here we have with us Mark Moran, City Administrator of Galena, and Emily Painter, who is a JDCF board member and active volunteer and committee member and a lot of things. And uh, Mark and, and Emily have uh, a lot of good history. They've been here for a long time and they were both really involved in the um, campaign that got Gateway started. So I'm gonna start off with Mark. And if you guys have questions, throughout this session, feel free to type them in um, and then we will answer your questions as we go. So I'm going to start off with Mark Moran and uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about how the Gateway Park uh, was first initiated? Where did the idea come from? Sure. Yeah, I think to really appreciate what we have here today at Gateway, you have to go back to the beginning, which was really in the mid-1990s when the then owner, Jim Richards, and his sister Eileen uh, they owned the 220 acre farm, it was a legacy farm. They brought a couple of Chicago area developers to the city of Galena who were proposing to sort of redevelop the entire 220 acre parcel. And they wanted to install a golf course, a lot of housing, and a, sort of a retail core that I guess I would describe it as a, a reproduction of a main street, sort of a town square. And it was really that proposal that ended up going through our annexation process and zoning process subdivision process through those public hearings that we learned about the community's great uh, love of this property and the vista that it gives us. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just intense opposition to the development proposal. Ultimately, the city council rejected the, the full proposal. And it was but from that process that uh, the Friends of Gateway was born. And uh, shortly thereafter, a committee of about 20 Galena area residents and uh, both from the city of Galena and the surrounding area formed and began working within JDCF as a land acquisition committee uh, working to try to purchase the property. I guess I can go on with this story. They, they worked for probably uh, four to five years and did a lot of good work, site planning for the property, again just trying to purchase it and preserve it and ultimately allow public use of the property. They had um, great success raising over a million dollars from public uh, places, foundations, and local donors. But in the end, again, after that four and a half, five years, just couldn't quite get together with that original landowner. And I think you know, there was still some animosity there. The landowner who had been essentially denied on his zoning request and his first attempt to sell the property. So it was just, uh, I think it was a very challenging negotiation. Yeah. So. It's, so uh, through that process, can you tell us a little bit about some of the struggles that the city had? Um, what were some of the hurdles that the city had to overcome? Yeah, I think, I mean, that process, again, it was just really bringing the, the owner and the uh, supporters of the property together and determining what really is fair market value. You know, there were appraisals being made of the property that said it was worth X amount. The offers that were made for the property were actually in excess of that amount, but even with that, they couldn't come together. Uh, that original committee just sort of had to walk away from it for a few years. And during that period, ownership of the farm changed. And 40 acres of the property ended up being set aside for development right off Powder House Hill Road. But the other 80 or 180 acres, the new owner was now amenable to talking about selling and uh, making the park a reality. So a second committee was formed. Uh, I think Emily was involved in that in 2008 or 9, somewhere around that time. And this one, not not uh, under JDCF, but affiliated with them. Friends of Gateway Park, they were called. And within a very short amount of time, they assembled grants uh, in excess of a million dollars and did a, did a real uh, hard fundraising <laughs> effort over a six week period. <clears throat> that brought all the resources together to make the initial acquisition of 100 acres. So that happened in 2010. And Emily, you remember a lot of that. I story. remember it all. <clears throat> and I also remember just 
as a historical note, uh, my husband and I were involved with fundraising efforts in those 90s, and so we have this great um, depiction of the view from uh, gate from of gateway from, to, to Galena, done by Jill Milhouse, that we bought at an auction. That was a fundraising auction, and we also have this coffee mug that we still have from 1998, where we gave <laughs> money at that time. So it was a long struggle. So when we got to 2009 and there was another meeting about the possibility of purchase, I think people felt an urgency to get this done. I went to one meeting, then I went to another meeting, and then all of a sudden I was a co-chair with Dick Allman of Raising the Money. Uh, we realized we had a very short time frame. We needed with the charitable organizations uh, to get the pub, to get the community match. But people were excited about it. And as I think Mark and I talked, people sort of knew this was the last chance. And I think we all love that view. If you're coming from the east, when you come around Horseshoe Mound, there's kind of this ah moment that there's my town, mm -hmm. there's our city that we love, and we see the steeples, and so. To raise that money was so exciting, and of course we needed the kind of loose partnership at that time with JDCF because they had the relationships with some of the grant organizations, and they were uh, Illinois Clean Energy, uh, Grand Victoria, Doris Duke Charitable Foundation, and of course the Community Match. And it was so exciting to do that, but of course then when the purchase was completed, what we had was 100 acres of corn. <laughs> and so what you see now is such a transformation of this property due to the partnership with the city, uh, the partnership with uh, JDCF volunteers. And I think it's important to note JDCF does not receive any tax dollars. So the kind of development that we're able to do comes through grants, comes through local support. And I think this has become such a treasure to Galena and to our larger community and to our visitors that this view is still here and that we are able to access this property. So that public-private partnership, can both of you guys talk a little bit about what uh, both JDCF and the city have to gain through that partnership? Yeah, I think as Emily described, the uh, we needed a entity to own the property in order to have access to these charitable gifts from the foundation. So that's really what the role of the city was. So that's where the partnership began. Um, as we accepted the property from JDCF, they had already placed a conservation easement on the entire 100 acres, which later became 180 acres in 2015. Um, so we had that conservation easement protecting it in perpetuity and then also entered into a management agreement with JDCF. So we today you know, jointly manage the entire property together. We work together you know, each year looking at a, an annual plan, focused mostly at this stage on maintenance, trying to maintain the trails, uh, maintain the parking lot, and, uh, but also making improvements, adding more benches, adding trees, and continuing to again, maintain the prairie and uh, continue with forest restoration of the oak savanna. Yeah. That's, and we know that's not easy work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not easy work. And I think we have benefited, uh, JDCF has a volunteer base that has done a great deal of work. Now they call themselves the Galena Area Land Enthusiasts, and they have done extensive work here at Gateway. My husband, Greg, is a part of that group, and I know they spent months and months and months uh, in a war against thistles, <laughs> and uh, it also doing forest restoration, which means taking out some of the invasive species and clearing so that the oaks and the more uh, traditional native trees and species were uh, able to survive. And um, the city's partnership is, is incredible. I mean, what a, what a good thing. It makes sense. It just makes sense. They plow the parking lot so people can access the property year-round. We have a question from Maureen who's asking, um, what is there to do out here? Hiking trails? <laughs> what kinds of things yeah. can you do out here at Gateway Park? Sure, I think hiking is the primary activity. We're on one of the trails here. This trail is actually constructed to Americans with Disabilities Act standards, so it is uh, accessible to everybody. So hiking, biking, although biking is, uh, once you get off this main trail, it gets very challenging. <laughs> 
Uh, in, the, in the winter, we have snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, a little more difficult. But again, hiking would be the primary activity. I also think uh, birding, and we enjoy coming out here and just seeing the various stages of the prairie. The oh, prairie yeah. now has been established for probably about five years at different stages, but it's fascinating every part of the year. Yeah. And I, as we were talking earlier, I said this ADA accessible trail is great for kids because it's a loop and they can run, 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 and then when they get to the end of the gravel, they can run back up the hill and it's very family friendly. You can have your dog here on leash um, it's a great place, and you have beautiful views of Galena, and you're so close to Galena. And, and, and Gateway, what are the hours of that people can come here? Yeah, it's dawn to dusk. Okay. Every day of the year, uh, we close a few days during hunting season, and when the prairie is being burned. But other than that, year round. And I think Gateway is a property that really needs to be experienced in all four seasons. It just transforms mm -hmm. itself so much season to season. And today, some of our views, for instance, were blocked by the tall wildflowers, but a few months from now that'll be completely different. You start to see more of the oak savanna, yeah. for instance. And yeah. if you're able, of course, I'd encourage you to get all the way to the bottom of the property, which just has a whole di different totally dynamic. Totally different ecosystem down there. Yeah. yeah. And this is part of this whole Galena Gateway kind of complex. Uh, we have Horseshoe Mound across the way, which is a JDCF property that's open to the public. Um, and as Mark said, at the bottom, it almost, almost connects with uh, the Bueller Trail, which goes onto the city's bike trail, which then goes down all the way to Casper Bluff. So such great opportunities. And I think we're noticing that both our citizens and our visitors are really treasuring the opportunity for this open space and the restoration. And this partnership, I think, is what made it possible. Absolutely. And the, the support of the community being relatively new in the community, I've learned a lot about the story of Gateway, and it's very heartwarming, and I really appreciate seeing the way the community has come together to preserve uh, this piece of land and, and open it up for everybody to enjoy. I think it was also uh, the purchase and the, the Save the View campaign really energized the community and enhanced their confidence in JDCF as an organization that provided a lot uh, to the community. Um, and I think it became more knowledgeable about it and mm -hmm. really treasured those yeah. opportunities and are much more aware of the various other properties that JDC owns. You said something a while ago about um, when uh, a big goal like this is in place, it really oh. takes everybody. It does take yeah. everybody. And I think when we just did the Save the View campaign, that's what we wanted to communicate. that. Everybody's help. If you could contribute a little, great. If you could contribute a little more, great. But we need everybody. And I think that energy came through. And I think because of some of the challenges that we did, that Mark mentioned earlier on, people were just, they were ready for it. And the fact that we were able to, you know, basically six to eight weeks, raise over $220,000 still staggers me, but <laughs> I think it just shows people in Galena are like, we're getting this done. And not just Galena. I, mean, I want to say that obviously it was very important to the actual citizens of Galena, but throughout the area, throughout the, the county. This is a view that's known and treasured, and so we are grateful to all those people. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. If you guys have any more questions for Mark or Emily, you can feel free to type them in in the comments section and we can always come around later on and answer those questions later too. So uh, this is a great story. I'm thankful that you guys joined us today to learn about Gateway's history um, and how it was preserved. So um, uh, if you want to consider a gift to JDCF, you can visit us at www.jdcf.org. Um, we are a non-profit, which means we don't receive any tax dollars. Um, and, and this is just one example of something that, uh, that we're able to do together with your support. So I want to thank our sponsor, too, is the uh, First Community Bank of Galena, Apple River State Bank. They've been great sponsors for our educational opportunities for these Facebook Live programs and a lot of other of our educational programs. So thank you to them. Thanks, guys, and we'll, we'll see you next Thursday. Take care. Thank you.